Greetings, scholars. It's Sunday school time. Let's get into our lesson. Our topic today is Paul before King Agrippa. We're in lesson 10, November the 6th, 2022. And our Bible basis is taken again from the book of Acts, the 26th chapter, verses 19 through 32. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, give us opportunities to display our faith in your Son, Jesus Christ, and to draw others unto him so that they will also glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our lesson aim. By the end of the lesson, we will know why Paul stood up for what he believed. Feel confident in sharing our faith and examine ways to defend our faith even in the face of rejection. Memory verse. But he said, I am not mad, most noble Thetis, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. Acts the 26th chapter, verse 25 of the word. Paul the Apostle. Jesus called Saul of Tarsus to be an apostle. He sent Ananias to pray for Paul and to welcome him into the Christian family. The Lord prophesied. He saw is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel in Acts 9 and 15. Opposition to Paul often came from the Jews who believed he was a heretic. The prophecy of Paul's defense before political leaders came to light when he was in prison and stood before the Roman governor Felix who imprisoned Paul for two years. Heretic is a, a misbeliever, a skeptic, a religious outcast. And this is what Felix felt. This is how he felt about Paul. After two years in prison, Paul was brought before Festus, which was Felix's successor. Festus told King Agrippa about Paul's case admitting that he was at a loss as to how to handle the matter, according to Acts 25 and 20. Agrippa's curiosity was stirred, and he asked to hear what Paul had to say in Acts 25 and 22. In our introduction, we're going to learn a little bit about King Agrippa. My. King Agrippa II was the son of King Agrippa I, the ruler who was responsible for beheading the Apostle James and who had Peter arrested. Hmm. He was the grandson of the ruler who had John the Baptist beheaded. <laughs> he was also the great-grandson of Herod the Great, who in his attempt to kill the baby Jesus ordered the death of all the male Jewish children to and under in Bethlehem. So we see that this King Agrippa came from a family of those that opposed Jesus Christ and his apostles. Festus, Agrippa, Bernice, and other officials gathered, gathered in the audience chamber of the palace, Acts 25 and 23, where Festus announced that he needed specific charges against Paul before sending him to the emperor Nero. King Agrippa II gave Paul leave to speak his mind in Acts the 26th chapter and verse 1. Let's get into our lesson. First outline, Paul prepares his defense. Acts 26, 
verses 19 through 23. Paul begins by stating his credentials as a faithful Jew who before his conversion had lived as a Pharisee. Paul explains to King Agrippa that it is only after his conversion when he begins when he begins to be a witness to the Gentiles for Christ that he becomes a target in the Jewish authorities. Even in the face of rejection, we must learn to defend our faith in Jesus Christ. Thank God we can live for him with confidence and conviction because of the power of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, we can be a witness for him. We can defend our faith saints in the face of rejection. In our lesson today, we see that Paul prepares his defense and he's going to speak to an audience. He first started out with his credentials. Paul explains his apostleship in Acts 26, verse 19 through 21. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but shewed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. For these causes, the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Paul uses the examination by Festus and Agrippa as an opportunity to present the experience that convinced him that Jesus was God's fulfillment of Jewish hopes. Paul's assertion of Jesus' death, resurrection, and preaching to a world without respect to Jew or Gentiles is why Jews had tried to kill him. Paul's testimony, Acts 26, verses 22 and 23. Having therefore obtained help of God, Paul knew where his help came from. I continued unto this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come. He only preached that that was that the prophets and that Moses preached. Paul's testimony was concerning the word of God according to the prophets and Moses. Paul felt the divine will of God as he encountered hardship and persecution. Paul makes his mission known that it is under the leadership of God himself, witnessing to both small and great. God had given him a task. 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Saints, that's each and every one of our missions as we uh, take our journey through this world, through the, through this journey that we're on down here in on this earth we are to be steadfast and unmovable we are to be always abounding in the work of the lord and let's realize that our labor is not in vain when we labor for christ the message clear in verse 23 that Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. Although the Asian Jews accused Paul of abandoning the Mosaic law and the Jewish people, Paul held to the orthodox expectation of a Messiah as prophesied by Moses and later prophets. Jesus coming was to show light to both Jews and Gentiles, 
Christ's life, death, and resurrection was essential for making God's love understandably to humanity. My God, Christ's life, death, and resurrection was essential for making God's love understandable to humanity. Let's understand what the real message is all about. Paul made the message clear. He preached the gospel of the death, the barrier, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it was both to the Jews and the Gentiles. Right on the word. Crazy for Christ. First Corinthians, the first chapter in the verse 18 reads, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Even today, some people will think Christians are crazy. We must not allow such allegations to stop us from preaching to a dying world that there is a Savior in Jesus the Christ. Paul presses the challenge and as King Agrippa, whether he believes the prophets, Paul presses the challenge and I believe that it's supposed to be ask King Agrippa, whether he believes the prophets, Paul conviction and declaration of Jesus Christ as the Messiah proves to be too much to the governor Festus who shouts that Paul's too much education <laughs> has made him mad. I guess he was trying to call Paul an educated fool. But Paul was crazy for Christ. He didn't allow that to affect him. And we must not allow allegations from those that criticize and talk about us to stop us from preaching and teaching to a dying world that there is a savior and Jesus came to save us from our sins. Second outline, Paul stands his ground. According to Acts 26 verses 24 through 29, Paul respectfully declares the truth. How did he do it? Respectfully. And as he had, and as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning doth make thee mad. But he said, and listen to Paul, I am not mad, most noble Festus but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. When we are not received, when we witness to others, how do we respond? Do we feel the rejection? Do we feel rejected, disappointed, angry? Does it make us angry? Or do we rejoice in telling the truth? Or do we feel hurtful? argumentative or do we just continue in prayer for the person that we're witnessing to when they don't receive us paul's reaction wasn't to cower before rejection resort to religious double talk <laughs> or waver from what he had said my god this is a lesson for us today. When we're not received, when we witness to others concerning Jesus Christ, our Savior, we don't want to go away feeling like a coward, feeling like uh, just sad and depressed because someone didn't hear us or someone didn't receive us. But saints, we are to rejoice. In the fact that we told the truth, we're to rejoice and continue in prayer for them. This thing was not done in a corner. 
Yes, I remember, and I believe this is a good word for those that are uh, what they call them, silent saints, those that are private detective saints, those that don't want to share their faith and they just want to serve him uh, where nobody really knows if they're a Christian or not. They never speak up for him. For the king knoweth of these things, before whom also I speak freely. And this is Paul continuing when Festus uh, went off on him and told him that, you know, you sound like a uh, educated fools. Much learning have made you mad. Paul turned his attention to King Agrippa. For the king, and these are the words he spoke to the king, for the king knoweth of these things before whom also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him, for this thing was not done in a corner. God didn't quietly come down here and die for the sins of the world. Everyone that was in his vicinity and some knew the purpose of his coming, who he was, who he declared to be. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? All right. Paul is asking King Agrippa, now you know the law. Do you believe what the prophets have said? Do you believe Moses? Do you believe the prophets? I know thou believest. See, Paul had some knowledge concerning King Agrippa. He knew his background. He knew who he was. Paul used wisdom as he turned to King Agrippa and asked his question. He knew that King Agrippa was very knowledgeable in the Jewish religion. His family, and we'll repeat it, Agrippa I, he was the ruler responsible for beheading Apostle James and had Peter arrested. <laughs> he was the grandson of the ruler who had John the Baptist beheaded. Wow, he was the great grandson of Herod the, King, uh, Herod the Great, who attempted to kill baby Jesus and ordered death of all male Jewish children to and under. So King Agrippa came from a generation of people that, that had the knowledge and wanted to get rid of Jesus. Yes, we are to make an open confession of our faith. This thing was not done in a corner. Almost persuaded. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. My, my, my. Almost persuaded. And Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and all together such as I am, except these bonds, except being in prison. I wish that each and every one of you that hear my voice will be persuaded to be a Christian. Almost convicted, close but not fully convinced, in such a short time, do you think you can convince me? This is what some of the commentaries were saying that King Agrippa was saying to Paul. Although the scripture does not say, Paul stated, not only do I would, that you were fully, pers fully persuaded, fully persuaded as I am, but all that hear my voice were fully persuaded as I am, except these bonds he wanted them to be free from prison so they could help spread the gospel of jesus christ got the statement of faith in our commentary it says in what most people would consider a bad situation paul found the opportunity to share the message of god's revelation through the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. King Agrippa, his wife, 
which was his sister, Bernice, my God, Festus, and the crowd of onlookers all had heard a clear statement of faith in Christ and an appeal for a commitment to him. They had an opportunity to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, to realize that Jesus gave his life for them. And King Agrippa, my, his wife being his sister, Bernice, hmm, what an opportunity Paul took, took advantage of. Paul gave his testimony from birth to being well-educated, to his zealous religion as a Pharisee, to his conviction, to his conversion, and to his commitment to Jesus Christ. He was well-versed in the scripture and gave an appeal for a commitment to Jesus Christ. This is what our Sunday School Lesson Commentary called a statement of faith. Brings us to our third outline, perceived mistake to ministry. Acts the 26th chapter verses 30 through 32. And when he had thus spoken, the king rose and the governor and Bernice and they that sat with them. And when they were gone aside, they talked between themselves, saying, This man d doth or doeth nothing worthy of death or of bonds. They themselves could find no fault in Paul. Then said Agrippa unto Festus, This man might have been set at liberty if he had not appealed unto Caesar. Festus and Agrippa saw Paul's appeal to Caesar as a strategic mistake. But it was God's way through Paul of spreading his message in Christ to the summit of Roman power. My God, God has a way and his way is not our ways. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm pretty sure Paul would have loved to just went to Roman and preach the gospel but he went bound in prison in his appeal to Caesar. And that was God's way, orchestrated by God, to get the gospel out. Paul believed to be innocent. After discussing the matter, King Agrippa, his wife, and Festus, as far as they are concerned, believed Paul is innocent. It's not worthy of death. It appears that there is a legal problem with setting him free. Paul's initial appeal as a Roman citizen was to have his case heard by the Roman emperor. And once you file a hearing, to go and be heard before Caesar, there was no turning back. You couldn't, you had to go and allow Caesar to hear your case. Paul's continued imprisonment is a fulfillment of God's plan. Even though King Agrippa and Festus thought it might have been a big mistake, God had it planned for him to go to Rome. Paul would get to witness to the emperor in the same way he had just witnessed to King Agrippa and the governor. He would also fulfill a long-standing desire of Paul to visit the Christian community already present in Rome. And that's according to Acts the 19th chapter, verse 21. Well, let's understand how Paul got to appeal to a uh, Roman governor. Paul was not only a Jew, but he was also a Roman citizen. 
a person could become a Roman citizen by either birth or buying the privilege. Paul's birth in a Jewish family occurred in the city of Tarsus, wherein the province of Sicilia, Cilicia, Acts 22 and 3. Although a Jew, his birth in the city grants him citizenship. This is due to Tarsus' designation as a free city by Rome. So Paul used it to his advantage because he knew that the Jews was going to ha uh, have him delivered to Jerusalem where they can quickly put him to death. And then uh, it was also written that uh, while he was on his way to Jerusalem, they had planned to kill Paul. They had plotted to kill him. But the, and Paul knew about it. He had wisdom. He discerned it. And that's why he appealed to the Roman governor to make sure he would try to have a fair trial. And then again, it was all in the plan of God that he might witness to the Romans and also that he might visit the Christians in Rome. Saints, let us pray for boldness. Have you been guilty of remaining quiet when you hear others say negative and insulting things about Christians? I believe we've all heard it before. Pray and ask God to give you some holy boldness this week and to provide opportunities for you to declare your faith as a Christian this week appropriately ap appropriately articulately and with love let me read that again pray and ask god to give you some holy boldness this week and i say throughout our christian walk and to and to provide opportunities for you to declare your faith as a christian and we want to declare it appropriately articulately and with love let us be ready according to first peter 3 15 and we've had this in sunday school before but sanctify the lord in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear May God bless our Sunday school, each and every one of us, and that we might pray and take heed to the things that we have learned. As we always say, don't forget to support Sunday school. Do it by, you can do it by Cash App, dollar sign Cash New Life, or by Givelify at New Life Community, Kojic at 1570 Chambers Road in Delwood, Missouri, 63136. Let's continue to support Sunday School. Let's continue to be faithful and to learn all those powerful points that God has in store for us that helps us to grow in Christ. God bless.